Hey guys, welcome back to my house. That's right, the real rebuild project. I'm having a lot of fun. Check it out, my first door got installed just a little bit ago. This is into my powder bath. And aren't these beautiful? This is a really traditional looking door. I got a lot of fun finished carpentry projects going on. You can see there's wood everywhere in my house. But in this video, we're gonna talk about interior doors. I have like 40 doors in my little 2,800 square foot house. Besides the swing doors that you see here, I have a ton of pocket doors. I have bypass doors into all my closets upstairs. And I've got a bunch of hidden doors. Now we're getting into that in a different video. But on this video, sponsored by Geldwin, we're gonna show you all the things that I did with my interior doors, including a couple of tools for install you've probably not seen before that have really saved my carpenter some time. Today's video is sponsored by Geldwin. Let's get going. Hey Gilbert, you up here, brother? Yes, sir. I'm over here in your daughter's bedroom. Oh some doors. yeah, starting to hang some doors, Gilbert. Looking good, man. We'll talk about this in a minute, but while Gilbert's installing that door, let me show you what we're doing today or what these doors are. This is a door by Geldwin, and it's actually uh, Door America and ABC, American Building uh, Supply, are part of the Geldwin family, and that's where these doors came from. Now this is a very traditional style and rail door. I'm going for a pretty traditional look in this house. I've got a lot of trim. I've got a wainscot detail in my daughter's bedroom. There's gonna be crown mold in a bunch of places. So this door, two panel door, and I've got this really cool chamfered edge detail. Now this door is um, a little bit different. A traditional door would be a, a traditional style and rail where this piece here would all be one piece of wood and this would be a separate wood. But I was worried about, because I was gonna paint this, I didn't want that crack to develop over time uh, right here. So this is actually a router carved door. Now let's talk thickness. It's a very thick door. There's actually an inch and three quarters thick right here. Oftentimes you see doors that are inch and three eighths thick. I wanted the thicker door. I wanted better soundproofing, especially upstairs in my kids' bedrooms to keep the noise from my boys, which is one bedroom over here out of my daughter's bedroom. So these solid core, very thick, and also very darn heavy doors are really gonna help keep that noise out of the bedrooms. Okay, a couple things you wanna know about these. Um, there's a catalog online, and you can, of course, order all kinds of different options. This happens to be from the Millennium Collection, but I actually customized these. I talked to uh, my rep at the Millwork Supply Place where I bought these and said, hey, I actually wanna do a slightly different chamfered edge. And because this is a router carved door, basically a, uh, a computer and a CNC is making these, super easy to do, no, no problem at all to change and modify a little bit. So my interior designer, Rachel, and I made a few changes and a few modifications. Now I mentioned earlier, I've got different styles of doors. Gilbert right now is installing a standard swing door, but what behind me here is going on is this is a big closet space. And so I also ordered some very tall, these are eight foot tall flush panel doors, meaning I don't have any of these raised panels at all. And I've got some bypass hardware. Now, if you saw my video I made with Gilbert a while back, we installed this pocket door over here with hardware from Cavity Slider. They also make bypass hardware. And that's what I'm gonna use here with these really tall flush panel doors. And then my pocket doors are also this style door. Now another cool thing I did was on this particular pocket door that Gilbert actually just installed right here, on this side of the door, the door facing the bathroom, um, we've got traditional paneling, but inside her bedroom, I specified a full length mirror. That's really nice. So now she can close that door and see what she looks like before she heads out the door. Um, the other thing I wanna mention was, I've got some really specialty doors and I've got another carpenter, Jorge, downstairs working on my hidden doors. Now stay tuned for that video. 
But let's talk about the type of door that I ordered. I ordered what's called stave core doors. That means it's a solid wood door, but it's a type of core, meaning the interior of the door, that's not MDF, but it's also not solid wood. It's really more like an LSL uh, door. If you're familiar with LSLs, that's a man-made engineered stud. It's usually a, a load-bearing type product. And the core of those doors, which are getting clad with some Windsor One trim and hidden in some paneling, are, are basically full LSLs, which means that when we nail into those with that cladding, they've got something to nail to. We could also route out wherever we need to with hinges. I've got a bunch of Sugitsune hinges. We're using a router template, we're routing in there. So that stave core door is the right thing to do. Now, Gilbert, these doors, they're pretty darn heavy, aren't they? They are. And tell me about what you're using here. This, this is a product I've not seen before. This is a real cool tool that one man can uh, install a door. So it's and called the door stud. I, the it's door not stud. true, I have seen it before. Uh, I had it on my new product video, but mm -hmm. I've not seen anybody use it before. And so what you're doing is you're putting that on the door itself and then raising the level with those two knobs, right? You level side to side. Okay. You level front to back. Mm -hmm. So once it's set, you just bring it into the pocket, put it in there. If it hits perfect on these corners, I mean, you put the screws in there and uh, it's level, it's ready to go before you run your trim. Like for example, here, you're, you got a little bit tighter here, a little bit tighter here. Then you run some, some shims. Okay. And you bring it to where you have a nice straight veneer. Very cool. So you have these to hold your door while you do everything else. And then once you shim, you just bring in and, and do your... And this is the, uh, the door install kit called uh -huh. Install a Door Without mm -hmm. Shimming. It's basically these metal brackets that you fastened first to the door, and then you're gonna screw those into the framing on the, uh, on the door jams, right? And it even comes with its screws so it doesn't go through your jam. That way, if you wanna use a huge screw, it's gonna, but they already have screws that are not gonna come through that jam. Right. And then they have, of course, these that'll tie to the, to the two by four. Yep. And, uh, and it'll, hold the place, it'll hold it in place till you trim it. I like it. And one thing I do want to mention is when you order your interior doors, be really specific about your jam thickness. Otherwise, you're going to have your carpenter do a bunch of extra work. So for instance, I've got a standard two by four uh, uh, framing, although I use some LVL framing, but I use 5 8 sheetrock. So that extra quarter inch compared to half inch, two layers of half inch, two layers of five inch, means that if I wouldn't have specified that, I would have had Gilbert having to make some rips for jam extensions. And by specifying that, I'm able to tell Jeldwin ahead of time when I order these doors, that's my jam thickness. So now we're ready to add casing on here uh, when we're done. Uh, Gilbert, let's actually uh, show these guys how we put a pocket door on with this door sud system. And I wanna talk about a few of the specific details that you do as well. So hang on a second, let's get lined up to put this pocket door in. Okay, so a couple things in this pocket door I wanna mention that Gilbert did to get us prepped here. First off, this is going in a frame that we put in earlier. I actually made a great video about this. This is a cavity slider frame, which means that there's a door glide on the bottom. There's basically a fin that, that Gilbert's attached to the subfloor. And then he's routed a channel on the bottom of this door. So when that routed channel, that dado in the bottom of the door rides on that fin, it keeps that door centered in the space. I like that, Gilbert. That's a good detail. He, you're also going to notice that he didn't route it all the way to the end. That's a craftsman right there. So at the end here, he stopped that shy. Now, two other things he did, or one other thing he did, Gilbert took the time to prime this door. He cut it to size because the bottom of the door was a little too tall. So on this top and on the bottom where we had raw wood, Gilbert took the time to take a rattle can out of our job box downstairs put a couple good coats of primer, covered up the hardware so that didn't get painted. Good job on that. Now talk to me about the install on the set on this, Gilbert. Usually on an on a install like this, it's kind of hard for one person to do it, but now with these guys right here down here, man, you can move this, this door, you walk it in, you get it close enough, and you just slide it right into place. All right, so we're gonna slide that door into place, and while he's doing that, I wanna make mention that this door comes pre-primed from the factory. Uh, from Jeldwin, but I'm going to paint these in place. So that's another big reason that we want to make sure that any cut edges, anything that's bare wood gets a primer. Really important to make sure if it's getting painted or stained, whatever, that you've got that on the top and the bottom. 
even more important on an exterior door, but certainly in bathrooms, be sure you do that. If this is a bedroom entry door, I'm not as worried about it, but in this space with all that steam, you need to be doing that. So what's cool about this door stud too is Gilbert's able to raise and lower with just a turn of that buckle down on the bottom of that little knob. And then Aran up here is gonna do the, uh, the buckling or the uh, connecting, I should say, of the door to the track. Pretty cool little system here. I like this. And then if you remember my video that I made about these doors previous, another cool thing about these doors is this trim can pop out for us. Let's see if I can make this pop out. This one's being tight on me. There we go, check it out. So this piece of, uh, what is this, one by two or so? I can pop that out. This came right from the factory this way. And you see it's got these little, uh, kind of like a biscuit that fits in there. That allows me to take this door out in the future without having to bust open the pocket to get that door out. All right, I'm gonna leave Gilbert and the guys here to finish up this pocket door install. I'm gonna meet you over in the bedroom where I've got the inventor of the door stud. Hey guys, let me introduce you to Jim, the inventor of the door stud. Jim, thanks for coming out, man. Thanks Appreciate for having me. So tell me about this little product here. This is a pretty genius deal. How'd you come up with this? Uh, thanks. Uh, well, I've installed a lot of doors in my life and I got sick of fighting them. I'd either damage the door damage the wall on my back and so <laughs> I wanted to build the tool and so I started with a prototype and this is version 35 later. Holy cow, 35 so, iterations yeah, later. So I, I cared about it working and I cared about it being a robust tool that carpenters would embrace and, and not break because yeah. you throw stuff in the back of your pickup. That's right, it's got to be durable. Right. Now I'm noticing Jim that you've got two sides on here, one that's a little shorter and one's a little longer. Talk to me about what's up with that. Well, the long side of the, is the jam side, so you can see that you're covering the thickness of your jam. The short side is the hinge side for when you place a, a door in a home, that short side is typically in a corner and you don't have enough space to take it off or to put your screws in. And so this enables you to do both. Um, and it's designed to be able to uh, take care of the center of gravity you don't have to worry about it falling over if it's standing by itself. And you don't have to worry about having another guy help you. That's really cool. Installed by yourself. Now you've got two sides of these, right? This one is gonna do the inch and three eighths or the inch and three quarter doors. That's correct. But you've got another size. Yeah, the heavy, it's right over here. Uh, Gilbert and I were talking about some larger doors that you put in uh, some of the other projects. These are both 12 gauge steel. Um, zinc plated. This one has a quarter inch uh, lift on the bottom. The Pro has an eighth inch. Okay. These are Acme threads. Woo. It'll handle 500 pound doors. We also make custom units that go bigger. That's beefy. And so you have two and a quarter to inch and three quarter with a spacer. And then on the Pro, it's inch and three, it's an inch and three quarter. That's so, cool. Gilbert yeah. was commenting to me two things that I think are interesting. Number one, he thought it saved him maybe as much as 20 or more minutes per door on the install, which is a big deal. But even more interesting, you know, I'm almost 50, Gilbert's almost 60, and he said, you know, at our age, Matt, having this handle the weight of the door means that I can focus on being a carpenter and not on being, uh, you know, the muscle for the door. It's a back saver. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about handling it. If you've installed a heavy door with another person, you know you're, you're pinching fingers, you're busting knuckles, yeah. you're, you're stressing your back. And you don't have to worry about having an extra person and you don't have to worry about getting hurt. And you know, I'm, to be honest, the heavy doors is what I want as a builder. You know, I was real specific when I ordered this gentleman package. I wanted solid core, I wanted inch and three quarter. I wanted that meat in that half so that I'm gonna have better soundproofing. Those doors are gonna be more durable. Nicer look. Especially nicer. with kids in the house and slamming doors and all that stuff, a nicer look. Uh, I can have deeper router carvings when I do that inch and three quarter. So, this is a big deal. Jim, how can people get a hold of your product? Uh, visit our website, thedoorstud.com, and it's available on our site or through our distribution partners. Okay. Yeah. And then also, we showed that clip. Uh, that's not your company, but that's a product that's uh, kind of a, uh, an easy product that's a combo to use with yours, yeah, right? Yeah, we, we uh, partnered with them because we saw the ease in use of their product in conjunction with ours, it's a perfect match. Mm -hmm. And so we're on their site, they're on our site, we, we distribute their product, so. We sell a lot of their install clips, mm -hmm. 
we put one of them in every box of the Pro. Oh, is that right? So that you can try it. Carpenters can see and try or watch the video on how to use it and, and have an option to experience it. It's different than a shim. You could always chase it with a shim. We just want it to be something that's innovative uh, that went with our product. So we thought it worked well for us. Man, I appreciate you coming out, Jim. Thanks Good for stuff, having dude. me. Thanks let's, for having uh, me. Let's go take a look at another door I've got going on in the house. Tip for you, I learned this the hard way. Anytime you've got slab doors, for instance, these are all my pocket doors on the top, and then those slab doors on the bottom uh, that are not router carved, those are gonna be my closet doors upstairs and those bypass doors. You always wanna store these flat. If you store these up against the wall like this, you know, if it was at a 45 degree angle leaning against the wall, very likely in short order you'd get a bow shape uh, in those doors. So a little tip for you, don't store your doors leaning. You always want to store them nice and flat. Now the last type of door that I want to mention, and we're not going to go into all the details of my hidden doors uh, today. Stay tuned for a future video. But I'm using this Geldwin door that I mentioned earlier it has this LSL core for some hidden doors. Now this pair right here is going to be for my pocket office. Uh, but Jorge is actually cladding the biggest of my hidden doors right now. And let me show you a couple details on that. And I mentioned this is an LSL core. Uh, I, also, I usually refer to this as a stave core door. You can see that solid core right there. It's just like those engineered studs that I've used in houses before. This is a very strong, very stable, also very heavy door right here. And then we're cladding this with some Windsor One trim. Now this is what they call a shiplap detail. When you, when you see these two um, corners overlap like this, that's what's commonly referred to as a shiplap detail. And you can see we could run them tight, but we're using eighth inch shims. This is a, uh, a U-shaped plastic eighth inch shim. And then Jorge's running them tight, pushing them in, and then he's gonna be nailing these into place. If that was a hollow corridor, there'd be nothing for those nails to hold on to. We do have glue, of course, as well, but really, really nice to get a stave corridor and to be able to order those in whatever custom size I needed. Very, very nice. Big thanks to Geldwin for sponsoring today's video. Lots of good stuff, guys. Everything we talked about from the doors that I selected uh, to some of the cool parts from the guys at Doorstud, all that will be available in the description. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on Build Show.